And if Michael's asking us how we've gone from clapping to carers to where we are today, you lose that, that public um, support very quickly. That, that's, very disinge- like that's, that's very disingenuous, though, because it wasn't the case that we were going to give nurses and doctors pay restoration until they went on strike, right? And strike is a last resort. Again, I know lots of doctors, nurses, healthcare assistants. None of these people want to do harm. They've gone into this profession because they want to help people. So I don't think anyone is taking this decision in any way lightly. But they think they've had enough. And they see that the NHS is crumbling around them. And there were lots and lots of operations that were cancelled before this strike. So, yes, it's incredibly unfortunate. If your operation was cancelled this week, that's really going to be difficult for you. It's going to be heartbreaking. I, but but if it was cancelled two months ago, that's also going to be heartbreaking. Your for you. answer is, oh, well. No, so, no, no, no. My answer, my answer is the ends might justify the means. And if the ends is you have an NHS where workers are feeling like they are properly valued, where they're not encouraged to go move to America or Australia, where they might get a higher wage, then that might be worth the pain of this four days to get to but an Michael, outcome those are where the NHS is in the long term, on a more sustainable... And those are policy views, which you and I, not being doctors, are perfectly entitled... We may disagree about them, but we're entitled to take views on and express them in the way that you have. You're not, if you're a doctor, whose duty is to the patient in front of you. If you are treating the assassin of Abraham Lincoln, your duty isn't to the wider notion of the state and whether or not you should assist them to get away. You treat the broken leg. Now, because you're a doctor and your responsibility is the individual patient, not to pontificate about broader... This isn't pontification. This is, this is, this is, this is where they work every patients. day. This is where they work every day. So they yes, can see not the NHS crumbling around for these four specific days when they're on strike, which you admit at the start of this conversation is a legitimate thing can for workers to do. Can I ask a quick question? How would you fund all this? How would you fund all this? I would tax the rich a little bit more. Who's the rich? Who's the rich? People on over 80k. So I think you could raise a lot of money by taxing people over 80k. I think there are lots of people who are accruing a lot of wealth, especially actually over so, the COVID-19 oh, so, so, pandemic. So, so, House so, prices went up. So you'd be taxing people like the consultants a lot more money to pay for the junior doctors? Or I think yeah. actually if you've got some of the top end junior doctors, when you add all of their, you know, their unsavoury hours, their, their pay, so bonuses, you'd be taxing them more? Yeah, that, I mean, that, 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 that's sort of the social democratic vision of society, which is to say you properly fund public services and you do it by higher taxes, which are progressive. So they'll be disproportionately on the wealthy, and that will include some public sector workers like consultants. Well, it will well, also include wealthy, bankers. It will also include... The wealthy already pay uh, a huge amount to the That's state, because they have lots of the income and the wealth already. Right. I mean, it, it, it's not a radical concept to say we should progressively tax the public so that we can properly fund then, public we services. We already tax the top 1%, 28%. I mean, what, what 28% of our tax take comes from the top 1%. How much more progressive do you want to be before people start leaving? 